So we're here right after the Danish premiere of your movie. This is your first feature film, right? Rie Rasmussen? Yeah, first and written and directed. First written, directed feature film. Yeah. But uh, you have been actress in several movies. Yeah. Brian De Palma, right? I worked with Brian De Palma yeah. for Femme Fatale, and I worked with Luc Besson for Angela. Yeah. So. And did you work with Luc Besson on this one also? Did he produce it, or he helped the, you a lot to do it? Or? The company was it, but he was doing um, after two and three, and transported three at the same time. So we did not see Luc Besson on this yeah. film. But, um, but did he help you with contacts or some, some old kinds of other ways? Yeah, his, his company yeah. was the one that produced it. Okay. So, so we were a small film in a large company, but who hmm. was it? Oh, thanks a lot. Because there was a lot of people in, in, the, in, the, in making this movie, right? It was a big, big, big thing. Well, well, it was a big crew because we were shooting in Marseille, and then we were shooting in Serbia and Belgrade, and we were shooting in Macedonia. Yeah. We shot everything in Co like that's supposed to be close, so we shot that in Macedonia. So that was kind of big. And you know, I'm sure you know French working laws and French like travel yeah. arrangements, they have and French unions. Food, food salaries. That it's was not, uh, uh, that was the hard one. It's not uh, volunteers. Working hours, working yeah. laws, union laws, travel, per diem. Yeah. That's a mother to get around. <laughs> how, about the, how about the? Are they two some uh, myth, um, the, the what's it called the central guys in the movie the Sean character and the yeah. Serbian? What did you find the those actors? Did you didn't um, know them from before? Uh, uh, Nikola Duricko, who's a Serbian actor, is yeah. a phenomenal actor. He's yeah. also a writer and director, and he's just, just he's mostly does comedy in yeah. his own country, but he's such a deep. Right. Dramatic actor, and he's got such timing. I mean, yeah. he's wonderful. And Nick Corey is a is a very old friend of mine that um, who also acted in my first short film that was nominated in Cannes. Oh yeah, the the, the one with the the god Thinning and the, the evil and yeah. the yeah, yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I see that, and it's on the internet. Thinning the herd. Yeah. So and and he's he's so darn yeah. gifted. <laughs> so he's the guy in that movie that that uh, that gets killed by God or by yeah. the devil. Well, he is. He is kind of like, thing. yeah, he, there, he thinks the devil is sending him, yeah. but but really God is yeah. talking to him. And uh, so, because I saw this short film uh, in, in Austin, in Texas. Oh, yeah, oh hell because, yeah. yeah! You were at the QT Fest? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, uh, can you say just something about Tarantino? How, how were you influenced, or you're just a friend? How can you say or? just something about Tarantino? He's, yeah. what, 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 what? Um, he's a phenomenal writer. <laughs> Did he uh, inspire you somehow? Or? Yes, I mean, this is the thing. Quentin Tarantino, if you're a filmmaker today, you cannot say that you were not somehow influenced by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, just having watched his film growing up. Such as, of course, Sergio Leone and Sam Peckinpah and John Huston and Howard Hawks, Fellini. You are going to be inspired by these people, no, you like it or not. They, they put their paw print on film history and Quentin Tarantino thinks got a stranglehold on it right now. <laughs> All right. So uh, he's a cool guy. You, sometimes he's a you... cool guy. He's a good guy. And he put my short film in his QT Fest. And after that, I've had the pleasure of like experiencing him. Yeah? While he was films. making this film? While yeah. he was making Death, Death Proof or uh, something Death else? Proof, I, I was not there because I was opening okay. Angela. But... Um, I was there for Inglorious Bastards oh, for you were their, there. the production down in Berlin. I, I mean, I finished my film, and then yeah. when my film was in Berlin, I got to see the set of Inglorious Bastards and watch Quentin Tarantino work. work. Okay. <laughs> nice. And that so, was fucking the shit. So it looks cool. Are you, you're looking forward to see that movie, I guess, Inglorious oh, Bastards. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell it's yeah. Be fun. <laughs> because your movie also had some pretty crazy scenes where. This blood all over, all over your face, and walking around, and <laughs> well, biting I mean, it, hands it's off. All, and, it's all based yeah. on kind of a, it's very real. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's much of it is what has happened, things that I have experienced in in my life, and it's based on my sister, adoptive sisters, um, like this yeah, yeah, like her way to yeah. get to Denmark, her getting her identity, getting her Danish identity, and what yeah. it is to 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 have an identity in today's world. Def mainly defined by borders. You know? Could you say a little bit just about how you showed this movie in Berlin and uh, other places already? Or yeah, I mean, how's it going to be? You know, are you going to show it, it was really incredible for me to be selected yeah. with my first feature film for Berlin. It's, it's a very, very incredible venue and yeah. it's exactly 
with what I was speaking about, like the human zoo, the borders, the immigration, the existence, the identity, for me there was nothing better than to, to you know, to underline my seriousness about this subject. At the same time, I don't want to be wag the finger boring. I'm telling a modern, uh, yeah. contemporary story that really tries to push the limits. Yeah. You know? All right. And uh, are you? Did you already announce officially what you're doing next, or is it not yet announced? Or? No, it's no? not announced. But you have yet. some plans. You have some. I have a lot of plans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In Paris, though, we open on the second of September, I believe. Yeah. Human Zoo for a general audience, and at the same time, I open an art exhibition with my paintings, which is something that I've been waiting for all my life too. So right. really, in I mean, Paris? Ha yeah, in Paris. So okay. it's incredible. I mean, okay. an art exhibition in Paris—you right. can't do much better than that. Right. But thanks a lot. Thanks for thank the you, congratulations thanks. and the <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Let's go a little more. Head out on the ladder up. So. Vær nådig imod mig. <laughs> ja, vi er her efter filmen sammen med Danmarks Radios Bævel Carlsen og tager imod jeres spørgsmål. Så bliver... Som blev adapteret af Lena og Jens, min fars første kone <laughs> og min familie. Hun blev adapteret fra Vietnam øh, fra gennem hendes mor var indefanget i Moskau, og hun nåede, hun var 15 år gammel, frem til København. Øh, ved meget held at komme, eller til Danmark, komme her, og hendes historie om at komme her, og de seks år, det tog at få hendes øh, danske citizenship. Fra mænd, brødre og fædre, der har slået sammen og tabt deres liv på, at vi kan defend the borders og beskytte vores kvinder og børn, men når der så er krig, så er det jo kvinder og børn, der bliver voldtaget og dør, og mænd, der slås, og men der slås for den her grænse, fordi vi er så forskellige jo. Og hvis vi virkelig beviser, hvor fortællige vi er, hvor forskellige vi er med vores grænser, og derfor skal vi dræbe flere mennesker. Og, og så snakker jeg lidt om at have en karriere på at dræbe mennesker, at have en karriere i hagen, og hvad det betyder, at her har du lov til at slå folk ihjel, og her det er okay. det okay, det er okay mor, og det der det er ikke okay mor. Og så mænd, der sidder sammen og giver hinanden medaljer. Og min far, han elsker, når man skal arbejde på weekenden og putte en masse, 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 masse dengang med en videobånd på og sætte sig ned med ungerne og drive hele weekenden af med at se videobånd. Ikke mere. Nu har han en ny kone, der sørger for, at han arbejder i haven. Men det gjorde vi da jeg var lille. Jeg fik også lov til at spise burger hver aften og masser af slik. Det får min lillebror og lille søster ikke lov til. Men, <laughs> Men jeg fik de gode år. Og øh, min søster, hun elskede gyser og Brian de Palma. Og øh, lidt længere nede i rækken, et eller andet sted, sidder Lena. Og øh, Lena, hun elskede Spielberg og alle de store amerikanske grædefilmer, man skulle have tørklædet ud til øjnene. Og så boede jeg i Dragstrup, og der var ikke særlig meget at lave. Så... <laughs> Så øh, jeg fik set det på film. Jeg fik set rigtig mange film. Og så var jeg 15, da jeg rejste hjemmefra, så der var ikke nogen, der skulle fortælle sig, at de skulle slå fjernsyn om aftenen. Så jeg fik set rigtig mange film. Så det blev en kærlighed ud af, at de fulgte mig i livet, og de underholdte mig i livet. Og indtil man havde set så mange, at man begyndte at tænke, fuck, jeg skal lave min egen og fortælle den her historie. Og, og sådan blev det sådan en organic way of expression. Nu maler jeg, min mor er en, en, en enorm, enorm kunstner og tegner utroligt. Så hele mit liv har jeg tegnet sådan nogle små historier. Hvilket jeg så fandt ud af senere er storyboards. Det er sådan frame by frame, hvad kameraet skal se. Så, så det gav mig en enorm træning. Jeg havde sådan et forløb på alle, for når jeg så var, jeg skulle forklare noget eller skrive manuskriptet, så kunne jeg tegne det. Frame by frame, som de normalt skal hyre kunstnere til at gøre. Og det gjorde jo, at jeg havde sådan et enormt fortrin, hedder det, forskridt. For, ja. Ja, ja. Mor og far, ikke? Hvad kan jeg gøre det? <laughs> In the jeans. Jeg har lige fået et om, at vi har et par minutter.